Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to recap and explain a recently released thriller movie called Gone in the Night. But first if you have not subscribed to my channel then please do it. It helps. The film opens with Kath and Max, a lovely dating couple who are out for a getaway trip to a cabin in the middle of the woods. This cabin was indeed very remote from the city as Kath was tired of the long drive and endless navigation instructions. Max hastily arranged this trip the reason for which we will know in short. Here he encourages her to enjoy nature, scenery, and trees as she had a keen interest in them. Finally, in the evening, these two reached the cabin where one car was already parked and it looked occupied. Kath was surprised as they clearly rented it out. These two saw a young man coming from it where Kath forces Max to talk to him. Max goes to and starts chatting with that guy, who clearly dismisses Max's claim of booking. He says he and his girlfriend booked this cabin online and paid out front. Max and this guy started arguing when Kath also joined him. Upon seeing no way out Max requests this guy to let them stay here for a night. He throws an excuse of Kath being exhausted from driving and no other cabin or hotel being available for stay. Just then this guy's girlfriend arrived here, she lets them stay. Here Kath does not wish to intrude and wanted to drive away. But when Max had a word with her, particularly about her already having had a quite lot of adventures, Kath quickly changes her mind and decides to stay at the cabin. These two moved in and introduced themselves. The other couples were Greta and Elle, they were much younger and the spark between them seemed diminished. In the cabin, these guys drink, chit-chat, and enjoy. Kath reveals her first encounter with Max. He was her student, the chemistry grew from the first class itself. Max found a board game lying there called Pillow Talkers which claimed a game to reignite the thrill of their mate. It seemed interesting hence all started playing. It involved doing passionate acts based on the cards. Here Greta flirts with Max who enjoyed it and responded to it. For Kath, it seemed odd and weird. She was tired of the journey and hence retires to her room rather early. Max continued his game. When Kath wakes up the next morning, she notices that she is still alone in her bed, Max was missing. She stepped out, searched the cabin but no one was there. The mobile network was down, Al and Greta's car was missing. She heads out into the woods in search of Max. At some distance, she found sobbing Al who told her what had happened. Apparently, Greta ran away with Max ditching Al. Kath was shocked to hear this. She thought how could he do this to me, he was with her for nearly a year. Kath was heartbroken, she took her car and drove back home. After one week Kath was cool about Max dumping her. Despite starting off on a very good term with him the differences between the two were obvious. Max seemingly liked dangerous, adventurous situations, while Kath did not. While processing this, Kath's friend suggests she check on Greta as to who really was she. Meaning what the hell Max saw in her that prompted him to do such a thing. Kath curiously searched Greta online but couldn't find anything solid. She then finds out about the owner of the property, that is, the cabin in the woods where they had stayed. She calls the owner and it is answered by a man named Nicholas Barlow, who insists that he cannot give out private details of any guests to anyone. Hence Kath lies to him about returning a book to Greta to which he says he will personally retrieve it. The next day, these two meet in Kath's nursery, she comes clean and explains her situation. These two head out to a cafe where Nicholas seemed sympathetic as he understood Kath's situation. But he declined to give Greta's number, instead offering to accompany her to Greta's place. During the conversation, here a stranger walked in and recognizes Nicholas. Apparently, Nicholas had been a pioneer in a biotech startup in partnership with this stranger. This startup was being bought over by GlaxoSmithKline for tons of money, but Nicholas declined the offer. Here we were shown a flashback where Max was in Kath's house attending a party. One of Kath's friends brings up the topic of cult messages embedded in Spotify lists, how Spotify is unsafe for kids. Max seconds that, he says once I too accidentally got hooked to it, they asked me to meet at a shady warehouse. There they sold me a rare collection of records. Max was all in for an adventure, taking risks. He was a vivid collector of records hence he went. Later he makes an excuse of bringing wine and heads to a supermarket. There he saw Greta and Al arguing. By the look of their hip culture, he thought they me in some kind of cult. He started chatting. 
Greta liked Max, she asked him to tour their gathering before initiation. Greta and Elle took Max to their base, offered drinks, it had all sorts of weird guys with heavy metal artists. Here Greta asked some weird questions like, is he 50, are you vegan? Any cancer history in the family? Many other weird questions. Finally, they invited Max to that cabin where a heavy metal ambient noisecore concert was arranged. Being a hooker for adventure Max agreed. Later he lied and convinced Kath to go on a getaway trip in the middle of the woods. The next day Nicholas and Kath were outside Greta's address. Nicholas tells her about his dad who died due to a genetic disease of the nerves called synaptic hypertropia just before the deal was to be signed. This made him think about his life, what he wants to do with it and how to prevent it. From then on Nicholas spent his time on research, finding a cure. Later Kath saw Greta entering this building, she and Nicholas followed her. This place was the base of an underground metal band where Greta was a member. Facing Kath, Greta awkwardly apologizes to her for being a homebreaker, so to speak, but her words do not seem too genuine. She kind of suggests that Max has started a relationship with her and does not really care about Kath anymore. Then she drops her phone, Kath takes a glance at the wallpaper. It had Greta's face beside the face of Max heartbroken and feeling rather disrespected, Kath heads back. Nicholas consoles her, he shares his story. His wife left him with his son when he was 36. This broke his heart but he didn't give up, accepted reality, and moved on. Here he suggests the same thing to Kath. Back at home Kath burns down Max's cap and letters, she was ready to move on. For the next few days, these two meet often. Nicholas talks about his research and a transfusion therapy he was working on which yielded satisfactory returns. We see another flashback where Greta and Al were inside the cabin. Al was not sure whether Max will come or not. These were up to something which made him nervous. When he saw Max with Kath he panicked. He wanted to cancel the plan but Greta insisted on sticking to it. Max in private told Al about Kath as he wanted to surprise her. Next, as we know Greta invited them. The next morning when Kath left the cabin in anguish Al joined Greta. Max was inside a drum where he was sedated. Clearly these two planned something sinister with Max and the cult was just a front. Kath pays a visit to Nicholas with an avocado tree as an appreciation for all his help. Nicholas shows her home, offers coffee, and these two chat. It seemed like the beginning of chemistry here. Later goes out to bring some firewood. Kath was looking around, she found a photo of Nicholas and Al together. Al was his son. This freaked her out, she grabbed a bunch of keys and opened a sealed door. Inside she saw a makeshift bed with many tubes and medicines. She also saw a container out in the woods. In another flashback, we see Greta and Al here at Nicholas's house. Greta reads a medical report which surprises her. Basically, these two kids kidnapped Max, he was a match for transfusion. Nicholas was horrified to know what these two did, he didn't approve of it. Al justified it by saying he grew up 23 years without knowing his dad and now didn't want to lose him. Since it was genetic he was also at risk. Nicholas had no option but to go ahead. If this got three would have been in jail. Kath checks out that container, she opens it with keys. There she saw the horror of her life, Max was alive but with multiple medical incisions made on his body. Blood bags were there for extraction. Kath tries to wake him up, but Max only replies with gibberish, in a drug trance. Just then Nicholas, Al, and Greta quickly arrived here, Nicholas tried to reason it out. He says it was for his condition, Max was the source of his transfusions. Greta now makes a grave revelation here. She produces a medical document that shows that Barlow Nicholas never had a neurotic disease and was essentially doing the whole transfusion therapy to renew his blood cells. He wanted to stop aging, was afraid of being old and weak. Gray played along with it as she too wanted to stay young forever. Al was shocked hearing this, he genuinely believed his dad was ill and will die pretty soon. Nicholas apologizes to him and justifies his action as this would have given him more time. Greta wanted to kill Kath as she knew too much. After hearing this, Kath plays to Nicholas's sympathy and says that she wants the transfusion too. She was dating young Max to feel her youthfulness. In reality, every day of getting old scared her. She wanted Greta as her source as she was the youngest. 
Nicholas agrees to this and convinces his son Al emotionally. Greta begged Al not to do it but for him, dad was more important than a girlfriend. These two grabbed Greta and sedated her. During this time Kath rescued Max, she started escaping with him. But Max being in a sedated state ripped his incisions, the blood started flowing out and he quickly died due to excessive bleeding. Kath quickly left the container alone and locked Greta, Nicholas, Al inside. Covered in blood she reached her car, rested there for a few minutes, and then returned to Nichols's house. She stood at the window and started at the cabin. With this, the film ends. Kath first decides to leave and then suddenly decides against it. Whether she had a change of heart or whether her intentions were something else is left to one's imagination. Clearly, she suffered a lot. First her boyfriend Max lied to her and took her to some cabin on the pretext of the trip. Then Nicholas lied to her. If she believed enough is enough then it's justifiable. Nicholas and his gang got what they deserved. The film keeps you on edge, it has a mystery and is full of funny little acts. Overall, it's enjoyable. If you like my videos then please subscribe to my channel. Give it a like. Thanks for watching. Take care.